In 1924, Louis de Broglie hypothesized that, just as light has both wave-like and particle-like properties, electrons, then known as particles, also have wave-like properties. They are called matter waves or de Broglie waves. The frequency of a matter wave is related to its total energy through the Planck constant. The de Broglie wavelength of a matter wave is related to its momentum through the Planck constant. These two equations are called the de Broglie relations. They are essentially the same as the relations for photons shown by Planck and Einstein. The de Broglie relations have since been shown to hold for all types of matter, that is, all matter exhibits properties of both particles and waves. It expresses the inability of the classical concepts, particle or wave, to fully describe the behaviors of quantum scale objects. This concept is known as wave-particle duality. Here, I have an example of the calculation of de Broglie wavelength of an electron after acceleration by 10 keV voltage. First, calculate the speed of electron. The result is well below the speed of light, so the relativistic effect can be ignored. Then, the wavelength of electron can be calculated with de Broglie's relation. It is smaller than the typical size of atoms. Therefore, scientists can use electron beams to image the microscopic structures of materials in electron microscopies. If de Broglie's hypothesis is true, electrons should undergo interference like light. For example, in double-slit experiment of light, a light source illuminates a plate pierced by two parallel slits. The light passing through the slits is observed on a screen behind the plate. The wave nature of light causes interference. On the screen, constructive interference produces bright bands, while destructive interference produces dark bands. This result would not be expected if light consists of classical particles. Electrons should exhibit the same behavior when fired towards a double slit in a thought experiment. However, the electron should always be found to expose the film at discrete points, as individual particles, not waves, the interference pattern appears via the varying density of these particles hitting on the film. The detection of individual discrete impacts is observed to be inherently probabilistic, which is inexplicable using classical mechanics. De Broglie's hypothesis was confirmed three years later with the observation of electron diffraction, as it had been observed with X-rays, in two independent experiments by George Paget Thompson and Clinton Joseph Davison. In Davison-Germer experiment, slow-moving electrons were fired at a crystalline nickel target. The angular dependence of the reflected electron intensity was measured and was determined to have the same diffraction pattern as those predicted by Bragg for X-rays. This experiment confirmed the de Broglie hypothesis that matter has wave-like behavior. In particular, the measured wavelength agreed well with de Broglie relation. Since 1960s, scientists have used low-energy electron diffraction to explore the crystal structures. The electron diffraction and the Compton scattering proved the wave-particle duality hypothesis, which was a fundamental step in quantum theory. Bohr's condition, that the angular momentum is an integer multiple of reduced Planck constant, was reinterpreted by de Broglie as a standing wave condition. A whole number of the electron's wavelengths must fit along the circumference of the electron's orbit. Thus, the electron's wavelength depends on the radius and quantum number. The angular momentum is the momentum multiplied by radius, while the momentum is calculated with the de Broglie relation. The result is the Bohr's second postulate. Pay attention to the fact that Bohr's model gives incorrect relationship between angular momentum and energy from experiment. So, Bohr's model is often referred to as the old quantum theory. The problem was solved by Werner Heisenberg and Erwin Schrödinger using a new theory, the quantum mechanics.